wave 1 is an impulse wave for another cycle and it's rarely obvious because the previous trend is still considered dominant and strong. At this stage, volumes are rising but not enough to alert technical traders and make them aware of the new cycle beginning. This wave often looks choppy and it's difficult to distinguish, taking forms of leading diagonals or wedges, also having occasional overlaps. It is usually accompanied by divergences in candlesticks formations and as all motive waves, it contains a five swings sequence. Wave 2 is a correction of wave 1 and it usually does not retrace more than 61.8 on the fibs. If it does, then under no circumstance can it retrace beyond the start of wave 1 as that would invalidate the wave count and one of the main rules. Even though wave 1 began a new cycle, the previous trend is still considered powerful and the starting point of wave 1, which is the lower high of the previous trend, would be retested aggressively. Wave 2 always unfolds with a free swings sequence and usually takes the form of a zigzag ABC. Corrective wave 2 rarely forms complex structures and the wave trader should not look for triangle formations within this corrective wave. Volumes should also be lower than the ones in wave 1, signaling weakness. Wave 3 is next and it's usually the largest impulse wave, which can offer a 100% or even 161.8% target. Fibonacci extension tool is specifically used in order to determine the take profit target and the projected end of wave 3 by measuring wave 1 with its retracement wave 2. This is the most traded wave and it is well known for its clean look and solid candles. At this stage, the fundamentals and news are positive, causing price action to move rapidly with shallow and short-lived corrections. Elliotitians are usually looking to trade the three of threes, which is the third subwave within the third main wave. Wave 4, by nature, is typically corrective and it is well known for its complex structures or its extended sideways movements. It usually retraces 38.2% of wave 3 and its volumes reflect a much lower reading than in wave 3. Sometimes the pullback extends towards the 50% Fibonacci retracement of wave 3, depending of course if the retracement in wave 2 was indeed limited, in which case the law of alternation would kick in. A very important fact to keep in mind is that wave 4 does not enter the price territory of wave 1. If this happens, then the wave count should be reviewed. Acceptable cases in some traders' views would be the ones when the candlestick shows an insignificant wick or shadow, which tends to happen recently with modern technicals and high volatility, making them to accept it and bend the rule a little. Another exception would take place in diagonals or wedges. At this stage, the trend is clearly established and wave 4 represents the profit taking at the end of wave 3. Psychologically speaking, this is the point of indecision where the trend is countered by the weaker side in an attempt to gain somewhat control. However, what really happens is the fact that the dominant side is only taking a breather before getting back in. Wave 4 is often seen as frustrating in some traders' eyes because of its way of developing with complex structures. This makes the labeling very difficult sometimes and an unprepared trader can get caught up in a whirlpool thinking that the trend will reverse when in fact it doesn't. A good elliotician knows that wave 4 represents a continuation pattern regardless on how the structure develops making it a challenge. Wave 5 is the final leg in the direction of the dominant trend. Volumes are lower than in wave 3, which indicates that the dominant trend is showing price action continuation but with lack of power, much lower than in wave 3. At this stage, momentum indicators or oscillators are showing divergences, which are the signs to look for when it comes to wave 5's end. In other words, the trend is still continuing, but the dominant side is not injecting enough liquidity in the market in order for the movements to be sustained, making room for the other side to spot this fact and gain control. It is known that the fifth wave has become larger these days in the commodity markets, showing extensions and sustained continuation signs. Therefore, caution is a must because the divergence can extend as well in those markets.
Wave A represents the start of the ABC trend reversal legs and the effect of the divergence. It is typically harder to identify and its moves are most of the times unclear due to the fact that the fundamentals are still somewhat in favor of the previous dominant trend. This wave starts and determines the corrective structure, therefore it can unfold with three or five swings sequence. Usually it retraces towards the vibration levels of wave 4 and the most it can run is towards the beginning of wave 5 of the previous trend. Wave B is correcting wave A, usually with a 50% retracement and with lower volumes than in wave A. However, price action can move rapidly within this wave, showing a stronger retracement even exceeding the start of wave A, causing confusion with fake breakouts and buyers sellers indecision during volatile times. This wave always unfolds with a free swings sequence and under no circumstance it should be labeled with five impulsive swings ever. Most common way of combining this tricky wave with the classical technical analysis is by mapping it as a second shoulder in a head and shoulders formation. Caution! Wave B is the cause of complex structures and difficult labeling. Wave C is known to have consistent volumes on its side, clearing up the market's doubts on the actual trend showing power in its swings. This wave always unfolds with a five swings sequence regardless of the structure type. It is well known for the impulsive look and it is also the most traded wave from the entire ABC corrective structure. Usually it has the same length as wave A showing a 100% reading on the Fibonacci extensions from waves A and B, but quite often it can extend towards 161.8% levels and even beyond. To be noted that waves A and C tend to develop in the same amount of time and length, especially in the zigzag structures.